Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And the biggest news this week was without a doubt the 14th episode of Witch from Mercury. The second episode of the second season. Where quite a lot of things went down, including something that would be a major spoiler no matter how I talked about it in this video. So instead, I'll make that a dedicated video for tomorrow. Uh, the other big news then is that the Shizuoka Hobby Show will be held on May the 13th and the 14th, which is a major model kit convention in Japan with um, many industry leaders attending, including Bandai. And they also said that they will be showing off new model kits. Now, they haven't specifically stated if these are already announced new model kits or if they're going to be new new model kits, as in new announcements. But, I mean, I think there's still a very good chance that we're going to get some new Gumpla announcements from that. And if you want to go yourself, it is free to enter, but you do have to register ahead of time. So keep that in mind if you're in Japan at that time. And staying with the Gunpla news, it's been brought to my attention that the president of Bandai Namco Holdings has disclosed in an interview that the high grade aerial was the lead Gundam Gunpla with the highest initial sales. Well, highest initial high grade Gunpla sales. And that it continues to do very well. And I have no doubt that this is thanks to a combination of which from Mercury being a very refreshing series, bringing in a lot of new people, and also just like the Gumpla having a very well executed shell unit gimmick on the chest. That thing looks awesome. Um, over at P Bandai then, pre-orders have begun for the real great high new Gundam Fin Funnel effect set. And for 2,970 yen, 22 US, you are fortunately getting a lot more than just the fin funnels. Uh, you get six long and three short connector parts that can hook up the fin funnels to either the included action base or an action base number four. You get six thruster effect parts and of course the beam parts themselves. Two charging ones, two standby ones and two firing ones. And should you want to, you can also use this set with the regular new Gundam. And for the occasion, Japanese P Bandai also got a restock of the real great high new Gundam, titanium finish version, and the real great hyper mega bazooka launcher. Just in case you want your high new Gundam to be very well armed. And all three of these high new Gundam items will be releasing in July. And continuing with the new Gundam Gunpla, we go to Gundam Side F, where the life-sized version will very soon be celebrating its first anniversary. And as part of those celebrations, the previously announced real great MSN 04FF Sazabi will be releasing for 8580 yen, 64 US, and the entry grade Gundam Base Limited new Gundam painting model will be releasing for 1100 yen, 8 US. And what I really love about this painting model and also the other painting models is that they didn't just make it pure white. Um, the joints are still the usual gray, and we actually have two tones of white, making this thing extremely presentable just as is. They'll also have a bunch of other promotions going on with the life-size new Gundam, and a new video will also become part of the lineup starting April 29th. The two other releases then are two Zaku High Mobility Surface Types. We've got the Walt Custom, which comes with the standard anti-ship rifle and a new shorter anti-ship rifle that also has a removable magazine and two spare ones that can be mounted on the shoulder shield. And if you don't want to use it, it also comes with a clip to store it on the back skirt. Then it also comes with uh, two Heat Hawks, a stored one and an active one, optional hands and an action base connector. 
Selma's unit then um, comes with a newly molded bazooka, which also has a removable magazine and comes with two spare ones that can be mounted on the shoulder armor. And if you don't want to use this weapon, it comes with a clip to store it on the backpack. The rest of the accessories then are a new heat bayonet, which can be stored on the side skirt, optional hands, and also an action base connector. And then to replicate those very nice camouflage colors, both machines make use of water slide decals. Although I'm not entirely sure how well that's going to work on the very rounded shoulders. Still, it's at least nice that they are including them. Uh, but regardless, before you jump the gun and buy these highly mobile Zakus, do keep in mind that they're 3080 yen for the Walt Custom and 2970 yen for the Selma Custom, meaning that both of them are like $23 each Japan prize, which will definitely spike up to like $30 normal price. And did I mention that these are just high grades, they're not master grades or something else. And finally then, Japanese P band I got a restock of the high grade Penelope clear color version, a fourth round of pre-orders for Slagger's high grade gym, and a second round of pre-orders for the high grade Dead Scythe Hell. And talking about P band I, something that I missed last week is that Europe is finally getting its first P Bandai store in France. Like, I'm not surprised that it's in France, because like in Europe they have the biggest anime market, but I'm still like disappointed that they're only shipping to France. Like, it's not even the shipping costs are higher if you want to get it shipped outside of France, it's literally only France. So close, yet so far away. Um, and for people who like painting their gunpla, you also got a nice announcement this week. Uh, Aqueous will be adding 8 new Witram Mercury colors to their lineup. In May, there is Choo Choo's Demi Trainer Yellow, Daryl Balde Red, Farag Grey, Michaelis Purple and Beggar Pente Violet, and in June there is Lefrith Ur Green, Lefrith Thorn Brown, and Ariel Rebuild Blue. And what better thing to listen to while painting Witram Mercury model kits than the Witram Mercury original soundtrack, which will be releasing on July the 26th. For 4,400 yen, around 35 US, you can get the regular edition. For 5,500 yen, 45 US, you can get the limited edition, which comes with an LP sized jacket. Or for 8,800 yen, like 65 US, you can just straight up get it on an actual LP. But it gets crazier. For those who pre order the limited edition, you'll get a cassette tape with the Witch from Mercury main theme on it, and for those who pre-order the LP set, you'll get one with the Astacassia theme. Like, I know LPs are making a comeback for very understandable reasons, but, like, cassette tapes? Remember the good old times of having your cassettes eaten? And now I'm feeling oddly nostalgic. Meanwhile, on the figure front, pre-orders began for the Robot Spirit Saigu, Metal Robot Spirit Stalgies 2, and the first special set of the Exceed model series. These are limited to the Gachapon online store, which is the first time I heard about that thing, and for 1,500 yen, 11 US, you'll get a chubby Zaku 2 real type, Chubby Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Black Tristars Custom, and Chubby Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Char Custom. I wonder if piloting that thing is the Char from War for Earth. But the biggest figure news came from Witch from Mercury, with the Ichiban Kuji Online Limited Master Lice Mechanics Gundam Aerial. And the deal this time around is slightly different from the usual Ichiban Kujis. Instead of a mere 650 yen a ticket, 5 US, you now have to pay 8,500 yen a ticket, 63 US. But in exchange for that higher price, there are only big prizes. The A prize is the standard aerial, the B prize is the aerial metallic color version, 
and the C price is the Ariel with permit score 6. So you're always winning an Ar Ariel. Um, and if you get lucky, you just win more. Uh, the last one price is an acrylic backdrop and an acrylic solita stand. And there's also something called a double chance, which will give you an Ariel special set. They don't exactly show you what this is, so I wonder if this is just going to get you everything. Uh, but whatever the case might be, these things will be flying your way in August. And just today, we got two more figure announcements. For the people who like their SD Gundams highly mobile, we got the newest lineup of the Mobility Joint Gundam. And it is all about Gundam 00 this time around. We've got the 00 Gundam itself, the Jinx, Exia, Astrea Type F, extra parts for the 00 to turn it into the 00 Riser, extra parts for the Jinx and the 00, which is basically a weapon set, extra parts for the Exia to turn it into the Avalanche Exia Dash, and extra parts for the Astrea Type F to turn it into the Avalanche Astrea Type F Dash. This comes down to a total of eight different sets that go for 715 yen each, 5 US, and they'll be fighting to stop war in October. And of course, they all also come with a soda flavored piece of chewing gum. Provided they haven't removed that for import reasons. And for the people who like their SDs static, we've got the 23rd lineup of the FW Gundam Converge line, which we'll be releasing in September. And we've got quite an interesting mix this time around. For 693 yen each, also around 5 US, there is the Gundam Aerial Rebuilt, S Gundam, Zeta Plus A1 Omro Custom, the Nero, Jagan, Lugan and Miguel Attack, and the Standard Aerial. And on the gaming front, in Gundam Battle Operation 2, the Alex with the Chobum Armor joins the fray. In other news then, at the Gundam Factory Yokohama, the Minovsky Fly Test featuring Hathaway's Flash will be rejoining the show lineup of the moving Gundam alongside Latte Art of Hathaway, Gigi or Kenneth, and a coaster of the Xi Gundam. At Sunrise World Tokyo, the Mobile Suit Gundam exhibition has begun, the latest Gundam manholes were unveiled, being the RX-782 and Ag Guy for Matsue, and also two Susano Magic ones, thanks to the collaboration they've got going on. And then we got a new mobile suit girl who comes with a not too bad looking version of the infamously ugly Zacrello. The mobile suit girl herself is a slightly customized version of the standard Zaku 2 girl, who is now designed to be the pilot of the Zacrello. Kind of like the Dendrobium, or that one Zacrello from Build Fighters that looked like it was eating a Zaku. And talking about unique looking machines, today in Iron Blooded Orphans MSV, we got Atra's custom Hyakuren. The Atra Star Hyakka. I think that she might be a fan of Sailor Moon because the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this thing was Chibiusa got, ch got turned into a mobile suit. And as you can probably tell, Atra's only thought when designing this machine was cuteness. So as a result, the coloring was changed to pink, it got a ribbon shaped sensor on the head, a bear shaped thruster on the back and small wings. For its main weapon though, she let the cuteness slide a little bit and went for the deadly Atlantic stick. When I joined the Corps, we didn't have any fancy schmancy tanks. We had sticks, two sticks and a rock for a whole platoon. And we had to share the rock. Buck up boy, you're one very lucky Marine. To be fair though, it looks less like a stick and more something in between a Bardiche and a Halbert. And it is also described as a powerful and versatile weapon. Also, uh, the name of the main machine follows the Tekadon naming scheme. Uh, the Teka from Tekadon means iron flower and Hyakka means 100 flowers. 
And for some more funky looking mobile suits, you can pre-order the SD Gundam Gaiden Knights of the Round Table Arc Superior Dragon Edition Cardass card set. This set will set you back 6,000 yen, around 45.50 US, and consists of 40 Cardass cards and a display sheet that you can use with the 35th anniversary mini Cardass vending machine. As for the things you could get this week then, starting Monday, the Witch from Mercury Mobile Suit Girls and Boys started conquering gachapon machines all across Japan, meaning that for 300 yen a spin, around 2 US, you can get Suleta as the Ariel, Mirine as Dr. Octopus, Nika as a standard Demi Trainer, Choo Choo as her custom Demi Trainer, Shadik as the Michaelis, Guel as the Delanza, and Elan as the Farocht. On Tuesday, a new set of Witch from Mercury line stamps went up for sale. The Witch from Mercury Expo goodies became available at the physical Gundam based stores and side F. And the 121st volume of anime hit songs was released for 2640 yen, 20 US, which includes Witch from Mercury's first opening. And today then, we got the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Tornado Gundam for 1760 yen, around 12 US, and the amazing looking Full Mechanics 1100 scale Gundam Ariel for 4180 yen, around 30 US. It might not be a master grade, but I think it looks just as good. And for this week's reading material then, there is the big comic superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized, the May issue of Cut, which has a special feature on Witch from Mercury with a lot of interviews and even a special poster, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Anatomy featuring a lot of information on the characters, mobile suits and the world of Gundam Seed, uh, then there was the 10th chapter of Legend of Dragon Knight, which has become available online and will be linked down below. And so has the 12th chapter of Gundam Sequel. And also for Gundam Sequel, the second Tankobon volume will be released on the 28th, and this will be the cover. I never expected a nun to be front and center of a Gundam manga cover. Moving on to this week's Gundam Apparel then, where Bonkode kicked things off with pre-orders for three pairs of Gundam themed boxer shorts. For 3,300 yen each, 25 US, you can get them in standard Zaku 2 green, Shars custom Zaku 2 red for three times better performance, or Gun Tank blue. Which begs the question, is that a gun tank in your pants or are you just happy to see me? And you can wash these boxers with three new Gundam laundry nets that went up for pre-order on the same day. For 1,540 yen, 12 US, you can either get Shars Custom Zaku 2, Shars Custom Zagok or the Zok. And if SDs are more your thing, on the same day you could also pre-order a shirt with either the Night Gundam or the Unicorn Gundam for 4,400 yen each, 33 US. And on Suleta Sunday, we got some Witch from Mercury apparel. For 2,530 yen, 19 US, you can get Suleta's Beret, which has a much nicer ring in Japanese by the way, Suleta Beretta. Then for 4,400 yen, 33 US, you can get a red shirt inspired by everyone's favorite Choo Choo or a black shirt inspired by everyone's favorite Gundam Penguin. For 3,850 yen, 27 US, there is a big shirt with Soleta's tagline. If you run, you gain one. If you move forward, you gain two. And for 3,520 yen, 26 US, you can get a bunch of different t-shirts. A red or black one from the Jeturk house, a blue or black one from the Pale house, a purple or black one from the Grassley house, a teal or white one from the Earth house, a black or green Astacasio one, or a really cool white or black holder one with a blue, um, with a golden design on it. Then we got two ties, one with the Astacasio logo and one with the holder logo because why not? Uh, they go for 4,950 yen, 37 US each. And finally, we could get a bunch of stuff with the main promotional image of the second season on it. 
for 3,850 yen, 29 US. You can get it on a t-shirt for 3,300 yen, 25 US on a towel or a tapestry. For 880 yen, 7 US on an acrylic keychain. And for 1,760 yen, 13 US, you can get it on a visual stand mirror. And all of these Bonquetta items are currently slated for a June release. From Strict G then, last week Friday, you could get the Strict G Arms 23 SS collection, which was inspired by Hathaway's Flash. There's a Mafti Navy or Earth Federation khaki regular shirt for 5,280 yen, 39 US, a Mafti Navy or Earth Federation gray shirt, with a patch for 6,380 yen, 47 US, a Mafti Blue or Earth Federation Black three quarter sleeve shirt for 7,480 yen, 56 US, uh, then we've got a Mafti Navy or Earth Federation Beige jacket for 10,780 yen, 80 US, and finally there's Mafti Navy or Earth Federation Beige sweatpants to complete the look for 6,380 yen, 47 US. And then last but not least, we got something really cool from Cospa. A new shield backpack, and this time it is styled after the GPO2. Which really is the perfect shield to be turned into a backpack. Not only is it big and bulky, but it's also just like got the perfect compartments already in its design. For 39,600 yen, it is definitely not the cheapest thing around. That's like $320. And you can get it in either the prototype gray colors or rollout black colors. Which now makes me want to see a full pitch black GPO2. And as always then, let's quickly wrap things up with the pulse. A few weeks ago, Gundam.info wanted to know which machine from Zeta Gundam we would like to see as the next Master Grade version Katoki. And I think it's been a long time since we've seen such a close battle, such a close three-way battle for first place. The Gaffley won with 29.7%, but the Palace Athena was right behind it with 28.4%, which itself was followed even closer by the Humbrabi with 28.1%. And then in last place, we have the Gaza C, but it did still get a respectable 13.8%. And then the big question that remains, of course, is, is Bandai going to follow these results and turn the Gathlay into the next Master Grade version Katoki? Or are they just going to sideline these results? Because personally, as much as I would love a Master Grade Gathlay or even just um, a full mechanics version of it or RE100 version of it, if they're still doing that, um, my guess is that they're not going to stick to the pole for the next Master Grade version Katoki. But I could be wrong. As for the currently ongoing one then, they're staying with Zeta Gundam. This time around they want to know what the most impressive mech scene was from the Zeta Gundam A New Translation movies. We've got the Gundam Mark II versus the Galbaldi Beta, which was my personal pick thanks to that amazing animation. Um, the scene where the Ashimar got its face destroyed, revealing the really cool mechanics underneath, the Hyakushiki vs. the Kublai, and the Zeta Gundam vs. the O. And it's very interesting to see just how different the results are so far on the main website versus on Twitter. The only thing that they agree on is that the Hyakushiki vs. the Kublai fight is in first place, and everything else is different. So if you want your voice to be heard, I'll have the link to vote down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.